evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight. I have an exciting evening planned for you uh, as we voyage back in time to 1991 to go visit a turning point in history caused by one of the titans of time on planet Earth, a volcano named Mount Pinatuba. In 1991, the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatuba was a significant volcanic eruption in the Luzon volcanic arc of the central Luzon region of the Philippines. Well, this was a significant volcanic eruption for modern times, but this three-day event is considered by history books as a not that big of an event. The thing is, humanity is young on the planet. Our current history is very uh, fragmented, and volcanoes are the mechanisms on the planet that causes climate change in an instant. And a single volcanic eruption, stratospheric volcanic eruption, that is, can cool the temperature down to a, a, like a half a degree to a degree over a course of a year's time. The escalation of the eruption is set for 341 Philippine Standard Time on June 12th. A small blast at 341 Philippine Standard Time on June 12th marked the beginning of a new, more violent phase of the eruption. When I, the word violent in astronomical and astrological texts are connected to Mars, it's very important to remember that tonight, violent. The eruption itself is connected to Uranus, the planet Uranus, the word massive is connected to Jupiter. Jupiter works in a massive way. He's the largest planet. And then we have uh, words like pyroclastic surges. This would be a pyroclastic surge would be like a, 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 the surge of a volcano. And when we just hover over here, like so, it will give us a definition. A pyroclastic surge, also referred as a dilute pyroclastic density current, is a flowing mixture of gas and rock fragments ejected during some volcanic eruptions. Pyroclastic surge refers to a specific type of pyroclastic current which moves on the ground as a turbulent flow. Yeah, it's crazy. So, gas is ruled by planet Neptune, okay? Rock itself is Saturn. So, these are key terms that you have to remember growing uh, with your knowledge base of the astronomy and the astrology of volcanic eruptions. So tonight I'm going to treat you to um, evidence of why this volcano erupted when it did and why astronomically the reasons why it was one of the largest uh, second largest eruption of the of a 100 year period called the 20th century. Okay so what we're going to go here this is the area we've um they had several uh, evacuation sites for this, and one of them was Clark Air Base, and the other was um, Angle, Angle, Angle is, uh, I can't say it now. I'm going to come over here to the chart and cheat. Okay, so we're here. In this series, we will look at Nova Rupa, the Nova Rupa eruption, and... There's no eruption, which is the largest eruption of our time. 
of the uh, last 120 years. And then we got the Mount St. Hel Mount St. Helens eruption. Mount St. Helens, even though it was like the largest man slide, uh, mudslide of our comment of our modern um, history, it was our largest recorded mudslide of our uh, landslide of our current history. Uh, what makes this volcano interesting is that this volcano is was only 30 times smaller than the Nova Rupa eruption, which lasted for 60 hours. Now here's the Pinatuba right here. Now um, what we're going to look here is one thing I noticed about this in with not everybody that might stumble across one of my series is that they will have a difficult time understanding all these glyphs as planets and what have you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the first eruption here. This is when the first eruption happened, 341. Here's the moon, Mercury, the sun, and we look at the we look at the solar system here. It's really difficult to see the weight of all these planets inflicting the earth which is supposed to be at the center of the chart here. The big thing is, is that on this date as the article stated it was a violent eruption and it was ma there was massive flows and here we have Mars and Jupiter doing a conjunction only one degree apart in Leo which is a fire sign. And also we have to notice that this is, these are, this is a very this uh, time of the year, uh, the sun of this eruption, the sun is in Gemini, and the moon is in Gemini, and Mercury is in Gemini. And across from Gemini, where the Earth will be, is in the fire sign of Sagittarius. With serious volcanic and serious seismic uh, observations, I find that some heavy duty ones are in this fire air uh, partnership. And being a volcano is something that spews fire and molten lava and ash. Now, in this particular date of this chart, we have to look at Saturn here. Saturn is in Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by the planet Uranus, and Uranus rules the Big Bang, the eruptions, the explosions. That's what Uranus rules, this sudden, unpredictable eruption of catastrophic um, size. And this, the catastrophic size is, catastrophic would be Saturn, and then the size of it, the massive size, once again, is Jupiter being the largest planet. And as you can see here in the chart, Venus is sitting here. Mars is sitting opposite to Saturn at 9 degrees Leo. And then we have Jupiter sitting opposite to Saturn at 10 degrees Leo. And then we have Uranus sitting here in sextile. Uranus is in retrograde sextile to Pluto. And there are slight soft angles to Mercury and the Sun as well with Uranus. But what we're going to look at it now is that, because when you look at this flat plane of space, it's really hard to understand the tug of war the Earth is in the middle of um, as these planets own gravity forces the event to happen on Earth. So we're going to just collapse this down here like so, and we're going to pull you to the solar system. We're going to look at the clock here. We're going to enter this, and we're going to look at the clock here. 328, let's just change that, go back to 321. June 12th. It's amazing being time travelers in this day of age. So, 321 is 
I'm going the wrong way. 321, here we are. We're going to close the window and we're going to find the earth. Let's go to the earth, everyone. When we look at this chart at first, we're going to look here. Let's zoom up on the earth. Time to go to the earth, folks. Beautiful. Coming in, pushing to the earth. Here we are. Modern technology, everyone. This is at the moment of the eruption. As you can see, we come over here to the Philippines, where we're we at right here. The light's just shining on the, on the Philippines and the Southern Pacific. Let's go check out the satellite. Get a closer look. Satellite perspective. Coming in closer. And then we're going to swing around. So we are, here we are floating right above this South China Sea. And the sun is going to be, I'm going to find the sun here. The sun is over here. Now, we're going to look at this and see the type of turbulence the, the earth is in at this time. Here we go. We're going to go to the sun here. Or shall we go to Mars? Let's go to Mercury first, okay? The Mercury is close to the sun. So we're going to go to Mercury really quick here. Here's Mercury. Mercury is very close to the sun. The sun will be right over here. See the sun over there? There's Uranus. There's the Earth over there. See the Earth right over here? We go over to the Earth again. Jump over to the Earth. Remember, these all planets have sizes to them and gravitational influences on the Earth. So as we come up to the Earth again, there's the Hubble telescope. Go up to the top of the Hubble telescope. Here we are, coming in. You know, I take you for a space ride tonight, did I? Did you? Okay, you're going for a space ride tonight. So here we are at the Hubble telescope. There's Jupiter over here. And there's Mars as well. So Mars and Jupiter are together. And you see they're right over the ocean here. But to go even closer here, let's go over to Mars and Jupiter. There's Mercury over there. You see the angles are very close together. Now let's go over to Mars. Let's check it out. And the great thing about this program is that everything is to scale to the actual scale of the solar system as we fly through and come up on Mars. Here we are. As the light will be shining on Mars, we will get a, a, a bird's eye picture and look for the Earth. You see, there's the opposition right there. We have Saturn, we have the Sun, we have Venus. See how Venus is pulling in on the Earth? And there's Saturn right there. Let's go over and take a look at it. You see the gravity of that? Moving through the solar system quickly. Am I a sweet ride or what? Okay. And looking in, there's Uranus, there's Neptune, there's the Earth. All of them are making... All of them are making uh, harsh angles to the Earth, and, and the Earth is all by herself. Well, let's come in here and let's just get a bird's eye view. Okay, here we go. Bird's eye view. Now that we have our bird's eye view, let's look at, here's the Earth that we are just looking at. We'll zoom down on here. We'll come up on the Earth again. But here's Mars. See the Earth. Look at the angle. The Venus. So look at the weight. Okay, look at the weight of the uh, solar system here. Look at Jupiter. 
Okay, so we, here we have, we have this weight here, and Jupiter is the massiveness, right? So you have the weight of Jupiter, then we have Mars, and then we have Venus, and then we have the Earth, all in alignment. And then, where is Saturn? We have Mercury over on the one side as well, Mercury's over here. So when we go over to Jupiter, we're going to fly over to Jupiter really quick here. Flying through the solar system. And here we are at Jupiter. Second largest being in the solar system to the sun. Moving around. And... You see how Jupiter sits. There's the sun over there. And there's Saturn right there. The Earth is right there in point. This whole entire cluster of stuff, you can't even barely see everything. But you can see when we go to Venus real quick, how Jupiter's on the one side. The Earth is right there. We move this over. See, Venus is right up line. See how the Earth is just sitting right in between all these planets? Then we're going to hop over to the Earth here. Coming over the Earth. Coming to Saturn. Here's the Earth right here. And look at Uranus sitting way over there as well. And Neptune, they're all pulling on the Earth from these, this angle. So these are these three planets are completely opposite to the other planets in the weight of things. Going over to Saturn again. And then we're going to jump over to Neptune and Uranus. Just so you can see the perspective. Whew, hope I didn't break in on you too quick. Don't worry, I've never run into a planet yet. So there we were, and you can see Jupiter's right across, and Venus and Earth are all in there with that weight. And the, the poor Earth is sitting there in this tug-of-war on this day. And this is not even a big day in history, folks, for this particular volcano. But for modern data, this is what we have. It's a big solar system. And these planets weigh. Now, even though the mass of Saturn is quite huge, it's... It's not nearly as large as Jupiter, but it only weighs, because it's a gaseous planet, it only weighs it's about the same weight. I don't know how they know this for certain, but I guess how they are able to, scientists are able to depict the, what the planet actually weighs to how it influences the other planet that's closest to its orbit, which would be Jupiter. But Jupiter, is on the other side of the solar system right now. And now we're going to fly over to Neptune, which is one of the furthest planets from the sun. Some of these planets, planets are not human beings. They're not able to study the sun, but they are independent. They want to be independent of the solar system. They want to leave the solar system. And we'll Moving around, Uranus here, and there's the sun over there in the center of the solar system. This is pretty amazing, eh? There's Uranus. This is actually Neptune. Uranus is over here. Going to Uranus now, which is closer into the solar system. We'll move in. We're going to actually fly right by the center of the arrow. Oh, not quite. Here we are again. See how the weight is on this? And it's right in line with the Earth and Venus and stuff like this. When we look at this again. Coming to the Earth again. Into the... Here we are. So it's quite remarkable that we have this vision now. We could see how the Earth is in this 
tug of war with these other planets. It's not the biggest being, and there's these other smaller beings like Mercury and Venus that are not nearly as big as the Earth, but they are still sitting in the their orbits are still sitting in proximity to the sun, which is still millions of miles away from the Earth. Okay, so this looks great, folks. I, I'm happy that I showed you this, and we have more. We'll have more information on these positions, but it, it's very important for us to see how the influences of these events are completely under the weight of the solar system. The sun is so bright here that it's hard for me to find the other planets here. Just give me a second here. Coming around. There's Mars over here. We'll go back to Mars. Because Mars is that trigger planet, right? Mars is the violence. And on that 2D chart, it's really difficult to see the space and the relationship of everything because everything's stacked up in this little ring and there's these glyphs. But yes, here we are coming back around. We find there's the sun and the earth would be right looking for it. There's the sun would be in here somewhere. There's the earth right there. See, we have all this different, all these different weights on the Earth, and if it, on this particular alignment, as we zoom out, this particular alignment, we will see the tug of war and the different weight on the planets, and why this event happened when it did. It's a serious, uh, serious time in it. Serious time in it in history, folks. It's a uh, one of the largest, the second largest eruption of the 20th century. And as I just showed you, how all these planets, when you look at the chart like this, it's really difficult to see the actual gravitational pull and the stress on the planet from these exterior planets and these interior planets around the sun. But, but here you can see the certain gravitational tug of war that the Earth is right in the middle of that pushes the eruption to happen when it does. Once again, folks, the, uh, the links for this eruption will be in the description. I hope you enjoyed the show. And all the information's here. Here's the chart as well. And the three other supporting charts that we will discuss. Not too much. Only real planetary uh, movement that will happen during these three days is there'll be a little bit of movement from Venus. But the big mover would be the moon itself. There's four, there's four different eruptions here that I've looked at. And... Uh, it all shows how the planet is under significant amount of stress and the angles are very harsh on the planet and these and this is the reason why these eruptions happen but most importantly when you're looking at these signs when you look at the eastern horizon here there's a lot of fire and air and most importantly, as I said before, when the sun is in Gemini, the earth will be in Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. And of course, with this eruption, the sun was always in Gemini, and so the earth was always in a fire sign. And this is what I find is different about volcanoes and earthquakes, um, significant ones. Uh, a lot of the most significant volcanoes I have looked at generally happen when the sun is in um, Gemini or Aries or Aquarius or Sagittarius. But the ones that I've noticed the most over the last 
120 odd years, the sun is definitely in Gemini. Which is, makes sense because Gemini is an air sign. So you have the eruption, which being the air, and then the fire in the magma and what have you, and the burning heat of the volcano would be Sagittarius and Leo and then Aries, which is all the fire signs mixing with the air trinity. When things cool off, then the earth and water signs take over. The steam and the cooling of the steam, the water droplets, that's, that would be from going from Neptune. But Neptune is considered a water sign because of the vapor of Neptune and how it rules gases in water when it's heated, superheated, it's gas. So I really do appreciate your time. Uh, once again, here are the eruptions that we're looking at in this particular episode. Uh, the links will be provided in the description. And uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the trip around the solar system and seeing how all these planets are pulling and pushing on the Earth, forcing seismic activity like volcanoes and earthquakes. All the best, and see you next time. Over now from Crown Land Productions.